now hang on, there's some other little tiny spiritual killers in our lives. Let's define a few more of those for us. And I think they're helpful because we know what we're up against when we're wondering why we're not growing closer to God. Check this one out. Then there's the, we don't pay attention to the critical details of life, spiritual killer. I, I can remember when I was young, I read the story of the Ocean Ranger. And, and it's left a lifelong impression on me. The Ocean Ranger back in 1982 was the world's largest offshore oil exploration rig. It was stationed about 150 miles off the coast of Newfoundland. It's more than 30 stories high. It was made to withstand 80 mile per hour winds and 35 foot high seas. I mean, it was virtually indestructible. But one night, a nor'easter whipped up, a big storm. Now, the Ocean Ranger had been through bigger storms than this, some of the biggest storms the Grand Banks had to offer. But when an exceptionally large wave broke a window in the control room and short-circuited a tiny switch, no one seemed to notice. It was just one tiny switch. What they didn't know was that this tiny switch had accidentally opened one of the valves in the giant pier-like stilts which supported the Ocean Ranger, and the pier began to fill with water. By the time the first mayday was sounded, the Ocean Ranger was already listing severely. The seas had now grown up to like 60 feet high, far too great for any rescue attempt. So soon, the Ocean Ranger rested upside down on the ocean floor. All 84 crew members were lost, all because no one paid attention to one tiny little switch. One small detail had cost them their lives. And it's the same with us. If we don't pay attention to the details of our lives, they could kill us. I mean, go through a red light and it could cost you your life. Leave your house unlocked and, and you could lose all of your possessions. We can't compose a piece of music or write a play or pass a test or drive a car or even raise a child without attention to detail. Now, here's the deal. There's one detail in our lives we cannot afford to overlook. It is our daily time of connecting with God. Pay attention to what seems like a small detail. Lay hold of the tremendous power made available to us through a daily time of connecting with God. Don't get caught with a short circuit. Then there's the we get lost in hollow formalism. Let me tell you a story. Years ago, I was traveling through South America teaching pastors how to share their faith, and, and it was a tough two weeks. I mean, it was really grueling. I was going through Ecuador, Bolivia, Peru, Chile, I was staying in sort of these flea bag hotels. I was eating food I didn't like, and I was drinking lots of bottled water to avoid picking up anything that I didn't really want in my system. And then finally, I reached the end of the trip in Santiago, Chile, and I arranged to stay in one of the better hotels downtown, and I couldn't wait for a hot shower and some time alone at the pool. So late in the afternoon, I took the elevator to the rooftop pool. It was five stories above the main street of town. Uh, and it was a beautiful, crisp, clear day. The sun was shining, and, and I just couldn't wait for this time to relax. 4,000 miles away from home. So I took a towel from my hotel and headed for the poolside lounge chair. Now, when I got there, every chair was taken up by some of the tallest men I had ever seen. Some of these men were six foot nine or taller. I was so discouraged, I laid my towel down on the concrete alongside the pool near one of the taller lounge chairs chairs. I was, so I was so discouraged that I laid my towel down on the concrete along the poolside. I was so discouraged I laid my towel down on the concrete alongside the pool near two of the taller men in the lounge chairs. They were speaking English. I hadn't heard a group speaking English in almost two weeks. So we struck up a conversation. Their sentences were filled with words and jokes you'd only hear in, in a locker room. And at one point, I asked one of them why they were there and, and who they were. And he said, well, 
We're the Harlem Globetrotters. We're waiting to play a game tonight at the Coliseum. Hey, you want a ticket? Then they asked me what I did. And I told them I was a pastor. Well, man, I could see their minds going on rewind, wondering what kind of words they had used and, and jokes they told. And, and, and one of the guys was struggling to say something religious, and, and finally he blurted out, and, and it was with the best of intentions. He said, Father, I always cross myself before I shoot a foul shot. <laughs> I, I appreciated the effort. But I thought, isn't it amazing how a simple gesture designed to acknowledge the presence of God can so easily turn into shallow, hollow formalism? And form without content is nothing more than a good luck charm or a lucky rabbit's foot. It happens to all of us. Religious rituals and practices take the place of a real connection with God. And then finally, there's this spiritual killer. We just don't know how to do it. Here's the most important roadblock to intimacy with God. In talking with people over the years, I found that many people just don't know how to connect with God. They get stuck in reading through the Bible in a year or doing a devotional that speaks to them, yet never really leads into intimacy with God. And that's what I want to share with you, how to grow closer with God. There's a big difference between a Bible study, a devotional time, and intimacy with God. A Bible study and a devotional time, as important as they are, don't necessarily lead us into the presence of God. I'm convinced that connecting with God each day is the single most important thing we can do. It keeps us spiritually fit. It keeps us morally strong. It fills the inner circle of our lives with power and energy and wholeness so that at the end of the day, there's nothing more important that we can say then, I connected with God today. So, let's look at the three steps to spiritual intimacy with God. Mm -hmm.